Welcome back to another edition of Rudy's Ranch, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. This might be the most exciting rant. I'm trying to temper my, what do you call it? I'm trying to temper my excitement. The Miami Hurricanes just put an absolute beat down on the Florida Gators in Gainesville. 41-17. I had no idea what my expectations were for the Hurricanes because I covered the Hurricanes for so many years and was led to disappointment for so many years, even when, even last year, 5-0, and and then the season falls to pieces. Was it 4-0? I don't remember which one it was. All that said, tonight's, today's performance in the swamp Again, I'm trying to temper my, my temper myself because I don't know how good Florida is or how bad Florida is. Miami was a two and a half point favorite. I did expect Miami to win this game because I don't think Florida is that good, but I didn't think Miami would look like this because I really have no idea anymore. The, the reason being is the transfer portal. It just has – it's a, it's a new crop of players every year. You don't really have anyone coming back nowadays. You have a few guys that come back, but if you look at Miami's offense, the offensive line, they were absolutely fantastic. Miami's offensive line was good. And I thought Miami's line last year was good, but the, as it got – the season went on, I think they got – he got dinged up and so forth, but Francis Malgoa, Inez Cooper, Zach Carpenter, transfer out of Indiana at center, looked fantastic. Ryan Rodriguez, redshirt sophomore, Jalen Rivers, redshirt junior. This offensive line basically kept Cam Ward clean. They were they were good. If that is the way they play all year. Starts right there. It starts right there. Cam Ward's hella good. Yeah. Like I, he he plays the game in a way that is just almost like I'm cool. <laughs> you know, it's one of those ways that he plays where he, some people don't may not like that. It's one of those ways that gets me nervous. For example, he threw the one interception in the first quarter when he threw the ball across his body. Should have run the ball. He should have took it, t- tucked it away and taken off. Um, but it didn't phase him. You know, with the Canes were up seven nothing after that interception. You know, Florida scores on a field goal. They don't move the ball anywhere. The defense for Miami played fantastic. They played absolutely fantastic football today. Held Florida to two hundred and sixty one yards of total offense. They they looked hella good. It, it was one of those games where you're sitting here like there's not there was almost nothing. You will have to dig to find stuff that you would criticize about this performance. So if you want to criticize the th- interception on the on the crossbody throw by Cam Moore, he probably won't make that mistake again. Um, if you want to talk about the drop pass by. Sam Brown from Xavier Restrepo on the on the end, end around uh the end around pass from Restrepo that Brown should have caught that would have been a touchdown. I guess you can talk about that. You, you want to talk about the 45 yard missed field goal um by Borogales? I guess you can talk about that. I guess the one real play was the 71 yard touchdown run on the on the on the toss where the you know they all got washed. Um, there were mistakes on Wesley Besaint. I mean, he he played it poorly. Um, he played that play real poorly on that particular play. Who was the other guy that did not play that play properly? Um, I think it was uh, – I think – I think – let me make sure. I believe it was Jaden Harris who misplayed that. I, I could be wrong. I'm just checking my notes. Where are my notes that show that? I think it was I think it was Jaden Harris. He came down. He needed they needed to pinch that thing back in, and they didn't. It was right after um 
Miami had a third and two, and I was a little surprised at the play call. To it, we were short, uh, you know, we ended up being short on it and having to punt. We were up 17 10. I mean, so we're up 17 3. You're thinking, okay, go up 24 3 here. You put this game away right now before the half. You don't, and you punt, and the first play it's 17 10, and now the Gator crowd is excited. But Cam Ward immediately takes him down. Eight plays, 75 yards, touchdown. Pass to uh, was that that was to was that one to Restrepo? Uh, yeah, that was the one to Re, to Restrepo um, for 24 yards. Big play there. So a few big plays on that particular drive. That drive was massive because if it's 17-10 going into the break, the Gators feel good. You made it 24-10 almost as soon as they made it 17-10, and then Miami gets the ball to start the second half and drives it, you know, drives it down and makes it uh, 31-10. So overall, what a performance! I mean, you open up the second half with that touchdown, six play, 75 yard touchdown drive, and this was just they were good, man. There was a play that he, that Ward made to Restrepo, and it was a quick. He went out, dug in, does a spin move, puts the the safety on his ass or corner on whoever's guarding and covering him, puts him on his ass, and the guy got hurt. I don't know if he got cramped or what, but put him on his butt. Went for forty yards. Tyler Barron was everywhere, defensive end. He was everywhere. It, it was one of those games. I, I guess I can look at one thing. The timeout usage in the first half was bad. I, I, how do you how do you use all three timeouts with four minutes? There's still four minutes to go in the half, and you've used all of your timeouts. I the 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 play the, that clock usage is just mm, because we had no timeouts when we got the ball in the final possession of four and a half with three twenty one. We had burned them all. We burned them all. We called okay. That was the one that's that, that's. What, we call a timeout on fourth and one at the 35. I thought we might go for it. And now, or at the very least, you run to the line, you try to hard count them. If they don't take, if they don't jump, just take the five. Why are you burning a timeout? And they really never went to the line to take, they never actually got to the line to try to hard count them to jump off sides. And then you call timeout. And he immediately sent the punt unit out there. Why not call timeout? If you're going to call timeout, why not call timeout? Send your offense back out there. Try to get them to jump off. If you don't, take the five, punt the ball. That's it. So that third and short play was a little bit off to me. but And, and the decision to burn the timeout there made no sense at all. Really, if you're just going to punt and you don't even want to try to draw them off, just take the five. Why are you why are you burning the timeout? Because you can't predict that Florida's gonna bust a one play 71 yard touchdown run. So yeah, we had plenty of time left to move the ball even without the timeout. And even then we burned a lot of clock to get to the two minute warning, which we now have in college football, which was a little confusing because we had like 30 seconds to play and we burned, we just ran it down. I I Maybe that was the decision that we wanted. If we don't score, we don't want them to have a chance to score. But that's – are you watching Cam Ward? Cam, that guy is – I mean, he's really good. His, he's – I mean, he got legs. He throws a crisp ball. I mean, there was a few catches that – I think there was a catch that Restrepo made where he reached back. That was just an incredible catch. But overall, Cam Ward was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. 26 of 35, 385, three touchdowns, the one pick. Damian Martinez rushes 15 times for 65 yards. The Canes rushed 33 times for 144. Over 500 yards of offense, 529 total for UM, 25 first downs, 34 30 time of possession. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better season opener. You could. They they really made Graham Mertz run for his life. Mertz goes 11 for 20 for 91 yards. They knock him out of the game at the end of the third. 
DJ Lagway, the freshman, comes in. He does lead him to a touchdown drive. Where I think Miami was playing a little bit, a little bit um, soft in coverage. Florida rushes 28 times with 139, but one play was 71 yards. If you take away that one play, they really did absolutely nothing on the ground. I mean, if you if you take away that one play, I mean, you can't. If they otherwise had 27 carries for 68 yards. That is, I mean, that's that's hell if I good. I mean, that's 2.51 yards a carry, five two yards a carry. That's sensational defense. Um, I guess yeah, that would that that would really be the only thing I could say is I still I mean, clock management is a little bit off to me still. I don't know why you'd run down the 30 seconds to the two minute warning because at that time we're only at the 30 35 yard line, 40 yard line. It seemed a little bit conservative in nature, but we score. They get 24-10. Uh, then, there, you know, Cam Ward also hits Jacoby George for a touchdown in the back of the end zone where he escapes a little bit of pressure to make it 38-10. Um, oh, man, I'm sorry. Going back to DJ Lagway. DJ Lagway comes in. He does lead him to a touchdown drive. But, you know, it's funny when you listen to the commentary and the broadcast and Jesse Palmer going on and on and on and on about the backup. Look, look, we all know, people all know that Lagway is considered a top, pro- top prospect. Top recruit. If he was ready to start, he would have been starting for Graham Mertz. He's not. You know that they they get excited about stuff like that, but the reality is, he did all right while he was out there. Did all right, but Miami wasn't playing the same pressure that they were bringing earlier on. They're thirty eight ten. You know, um, but this this performance, I'm excited. But I have to temper myself because, again, I don't know how good Florida is. Florida wasn't very good last year. Florida's offense is bland. I don't know if it's because they don't have the weapons, but it's definitely bland. And um, speaking of, you know, just other numbers, Xavier Restrepo goes seven catches for 112 and a touchdown. Elijah Arroyo at tight end, four catches, 89 yards. That's big time. Isaiah Horton, four for 70. He had a nice – Double move for a first down for like a 27-yard play. Elijah Lofton goes two for 38. Jacoby George goes two for 25 with a touchdown. End of the day, man. This was even the punting game. Dylan Joyce, two punts for 97, the average of 48.5. Can't ask for much more than this. I'm Obviously, Miami is going to win next week. They're playing. They're having their first game of the year at home against the against FAMU, and then they'll host Ball State the week after, before traveling to South Florida on the twenty first. Interstate rival, another interstate game. But I would expect that Miami is going to be an easy three and zero after the first three, and then we get into the real schedule: South Florida, Virginia Tech, Cal, Louisville, Florida State, Duke, Georgia Tech, Wake Forest, and Syracuse. I don't want to jump up and down so just yet, even though so many people are predicted Miami to be in the playoffs. But, but if this is what comes out every week, if what I saw today is what we see on a weekly basis, and it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to win 41-17, because this game could have been worse. Miami could have put up 50-plus in this game. Kind of took the foot off the gas in the fourth. If Miami can look like this in terms of just clean game, very clean game, you know, only one turnover, obvious mistake by, by, by Ward in that turnover, but penalties, two for 26. That's not a lot of penalties. That's a clean game. Miami has a real good – after what I saw with Clemson and Georgia, look, Clemson's um, Clemson's defense was good for a half against Georgia. They got wiped out in the second half. And Clemson's offense is inept. So, it's the same – Miami played Clemson last year, I'm pretty sure, and we beat Clemson last year, if I recall correctly. Yeah, we beat Clemson last year. Yeah, we beat Clemson 28-20 last year, double overtime. Their office was a net blast year. 
Um, if their offense, their offense looks just as bad as it looked last year, and Georgia beat them thirty-four to three, I tell you what, you play like this on a weekly basis. This Hurricanes team is going to be something to something to watch. Cam Ward is special. Obviously, all of this, all of it, is predicated on health. Cam Ward cannot get hurt. He is the he he is the engine of this offense. This guy is special, good, and he just he plays with that coolness. Where you're like, God, I wish you wouldn't do that. You like he throws he throws these sidearm balls, but the guy. I mean, Today was fantastic. Today was fantastic. Woo! Yes. Let's go, Canes. But that's my reaction to this game. I'm excited, but I'm trying to temper myself because I don't want to get too excited because I've been here before. It's been a long time since the Canes have been legitimately good. I, I hope this is the rebirth. Although I have to accept the fact that Cam Ward is a one-year deal. He's a one-year deal. Because he's turning pro at the end of the year, regardless, no matter what. <sighs> we made the Gators Gator bait. They were the Gator bait. We fed them to themselves. Let's go, Canes. Come on now.